Welcome to this fourth Sunday in Trinity. A story from the Bible today is about a man called Jairus, whose daughter is seriously ill. She's just about to die. Here's the story. Jesus got into the boat again and went back to the other side of the lake where a large crowd gathered around him on the shore. Then a leader of the synagogue, the local synagogue, whose name was Jairus, arrived. When he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet, pleading fervently with him. My little daughter is dying, he said. Please come and lay your hands on her. Heal her so she can live. Jesus went with him and all the people followed, crowding about him. Well, this crowd, which is making the journey much slower than Jairus would like, is interrupted further by a lady who wants to be hidden by the crowd, yet she's seeking physical healing by just touching the hem of his robe. Well, she is healed, and Jesus, sensing that someone has touched him, stops to affirm this lady. While he was still speaking to her, messengers arrived from the home of Jairus, the leader of the synagogue. They told him, your daughter is dead. There's no use troubling the teacher now. But Jesus overheard them and said to Jairus, don't be afraid, just have faith. Then Jesus stopped the crowd and wouldn't let anyone go with him except Peter, James and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the synagogue leader, Jairus, Jesus saw much commotion and weeping and wailing. And he went inside and asked, why all this commotion and weeping? The child isn't dead, she's only asleep. Another one of Jesus's questions. It doesn't seem to make sense. The crowd, the professional hired mourners, laughed at him. But he made them all leave and he took the girl's father and mother and his three disciples into the room where the girl was lying, holding her hand. He said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. And the girl, who was 12 years old, immediately stood up and walked around. They were overwhelmed and totally amazed. Jesus gave them strict orders not to tell anyone what had happened. And then he told them to give her something to eat. How wonderfully practical. Well, I don't know if there's anything in this. Um, the lady who'd had an ailment for 12 years and this little girl who was 12 and the 12 disciples and the 12... I don't know. The 12 tribes of Israel. You can make of that what you wish. It's not the purpose of my thinking today. I remember being um, walking, using the tube a lot as a kid. I was born in North London and we used to travel on the tube as children, alone, <laughs> thruppence return to Wood Green from Bound Green. Uh, but on the tube station there would be these chocolate machines, um, poppets notably. And it would be very tempting as you're waiting for the train to put your money in and get your poppets out, something to do, little toffee sweets. Sometimes we think faith is like, if we can just do the right thing, put our money in the slot, then out will come the poppets. Out will come what we wish. What is the magic formula that makes God take action? This whole story is in the context of um, two other stories. One we've heard about already, the lady, but also at the very beginning of Mark chapter 5, there's a demoniac, there's a, sorry, a man possessed by demons. And he is no hope, he's no hoper. People have given up on him, he's there alone. He has no faith at all. God's powerful compassion breaks in on this man's life unexpectedly. And then there's the lady who, who we've heard already touches his robe, a long-term illness. She seeks a secret solution. 
She's not allowed to touch anybody. She's been ceremonially unclean for 12 years. And her faith is in touching the hem of his robe and believing Jesus can heal her, and he does. And then there's Jairus, his daughter about to die. It's an emergency crisis. Come and lay hands on her, come and touch her, he says to Jesus. And he believes that Jesus can. But what's the conclusion about any formula that might make Jesus do stuff? Well, there is no formula, is there? We can't devise any formula to make God give us what we want. Stroke, what we perceive to be the best. Stroke, what we think is the solution. The thing is that God is God. He does as he pleases. Now that can be read negatively or heard negatively. He's God, he does as he pleases, he doesn't care about me. He's capricious, he has favourites. Or it could be read positively, he is God, he does as, his, as he pleases. He is good, he is wise, he is powerful, he is truth, he is loving. Faith is therefore, I think, believing this about God whatever. It's not a superhuman effort to believe something can happen. A bit like Yuri Geller bending spoons and forks. The prayer of faith is asking and then trusting. The walk of faith is hearing, then trusting. The power of faith is allowing God to be God and trusting. The truth is that however faith is expressed, God responds to the trusting heart. The opposite is also true. Those who don't trust don't get to see or hear him in action. Remember Jesus at the end of that story put the, 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 those who laughed at him out of the room, out of the house. They sent, he sent them outside and they never saw anything. There's power, isn't there, of praying Bible truths back to God. Because we're reflecting truth back to truth, truth back to God, and saying we trust this. Almost, we hold you to it. We hold you true to, uh, true to these words that we're reading. God also responds to the desperate heart that reaches out to him in whichever way seems right to them. So what is there about these people that caused Jesus to respond? with his own compassion. Well, the, the, the demon-possessed man, nothing. Nothing except his helplessness. He wasn't even aware that Jesus was there, although the demons inside him were very aware, not of, who, of the fact he was, just of the fact he was there, but of who he was. The lady, her persistence because of the crowd, her desperation, this was her, his, he was her last hope, drove her to take the risk. Jairus, yes, persistence of the crowd and the bad news, despite the bad news. And his desperation, Jesus again was his last hope, his daughter was about to die. All these things caused Jesus to respond. So what if he doesn't seem to respond to me? Is it because I don't have enough faith? Well, may I just send you back to the beginning of this talk to think about what faith is. It isn't a, the quality or quantity of personal faith like a lump of something inside. It's fighting through the crowd. It's hanging on to the belief that Jesus can and will do something, trusting him for the outcome because of the kind of person he is. 
despite the delay. There's another parallel between these three incidents, the demon-possessed man, the lady and Jairus. There was a hopelessness about their situation. That phrase, God helps those who help themselves, clearly is not true. It's another moment to stop quantifying personal faith and start marvelling at the God of the impossible and still all the while trusting him for the outcome. When Jesus was walking Israel, he brought with him a foretaste of what would be true when he returns as Lord and King of all. The forces of chaos and disorder will be quelled. The restoration of health and relationships, resurrection from death. Our longing may be for this moment and for this situation. And God may bring the kingdom of Jesus into our moment. But if he doesn't seem to, our hope is still in the one who will return and the fact that it will happen. When we want God to change something for someone else, we thrash about on their behalf. Would Jairus' example to seek out Jesus, to persist despite the crowd, to trust despite the developing of the situation into an impossible one, and to accept, accept whatever Jesus does. I know somebody who is facing a pretty rotten situation. I would love things to change for that person. So where is my faith in this one? To believe and to go on believing that God is good that God hears and responds to a heart that cries out to him. That God requires justice from people. That God loves the truth. That God is powerful, so powerful, he can use whatever the broken world throws at a situation to accomplish his own purposes which may be different from those I envisage or hope for. This is faith. And Jesus says your faith is effective. Church is a place of the supernatural breaking in. Because church is a place where Jesus' name is upheld and honoured. But I think church is more, it's the gathered place of faith. That lovely song, I will hold the Christ light for you in the night time of your fear. I will hold my hand out to you. Speak the peace you long to hear. You can hold faith on behalf of others. You can encourage them in their faith. You can be there for them. Brother, sister, let me serve you Let me be as Christ to you Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. We are pilgrims on a journey and companions on the road. We are here to help each other walk the mile and bear the Lord. I will hold the Christ light for you in the night time of your fear. I will hold my hand out to you. Speak the peace. When you are weeping, when you laugh 
fall off with you I will share your joy and sorrow Till we've seen this journey through When we sing to God in heaven We shall find such harmony Born of all we've known together Of Christ's love and agony Brother, sister, let me serve you Let me be as Christ to you Pray that I may have grace to let you be my servant too. So we turn to prayer. Everlasting God, we pray for your church throughout the world, for Christians everywhere. Increase our faith. Build us up. Help us to turn to Jesus for the help we need and to be there for one another. We pray for Christians working in places of power and influence who can make a difference to people's lives. Help them to know what to say, how to say it, and still to be true and faithful to you. We bring to you those who we love, family and friends, their hopes, their fears, their problems and their needs. On their behalf, we ask that you would bring your healing in body, mind, spirit and relationship. May we see you at work and trust you for the outcomes. In the week that stretches out ahead, help us to keep the faith as deeply and passionately and persistently as Jairus. And so our special prayer for today. Gracious Father, by the obedience of Jesus, you brought salvation to our wayward world. Draw us into harmony with your will, that we may find all things restored in him, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.